Despite what you may see online, starting a clothing brand isn't easy. And trust me, I would know. I've seen both sides of running a clothing brand. The beautiful success to watching it all crash and burn. From making thousands of dollars from my brand to losing it all due to some simple mistakes. But in this video, we'll take a look at where it all went right and where it all went wrong. So you can learn from my mistakes and have a brand that flourishes. So back in 2018 was where it all began for my brand called Fussy. At this time I was still in high school and I had a massive passion for streetwear. And I also wanted to get into a side hustle to start making some money. And after watching a few videos on YouTube, I thought this was going to be the easiest way to make thousands of dollars. It got me super excited because I thought I was going to be living the laid back life and swimming in cash. Little did I know that this was actually going to be the most difficult business I've run today. So my first thing I had to sort out was where I was going to source my clothes from. And also the designs I wanted to be printed on the clothes. I had my design ready and they weren't anything crazy but I thought it looked all pretty cool and I had a brand starting to grow a story but as soon as I started trying to source the clothes was where I ran into problem number one after watching all these YouTube videos I got told that I should be sourcing my product from China and I shouldn't source locally because it was going to be so much cheaper and I'd have more customization options so I hopped on Alibaba and after a while of searching I finally found a supplier and remember I was only 17 at the time and I had never run a business before this and obviously trying to talk to a supplier over in China who doesn't speak the best English and also needed a really high MOQ would be a stupid decision, right? Well, it was, but more on that later anyway. After a few weeks of back and forth, I eventually got my products and the quality turned out to be okay. It could have been a bit better, but overall I was pretty happy with everything and I was ready to start selling. I got a few of my friends to help me out and start shooting content and we got some real cool shots and eventually it started looking like it was going to be an actual brand. It had an aesthetic, it had a story and, and literally everyone I showed the designs to loved the whole idea. So once I had all the photos and videos done, I started hyping everything up on Insta. And I actually started getting quite a bit of traction. I had good engagement on all my photos. People were all sharing it to their stories. Even people I didn't know, which was really cool. I hyped it up for about a month and eventually drop day came around. I was super nervous, but as soon as the site went live, all of my nerves were gone. I must have done a good job hyping it up because by the end of the day, almost half of the stock had gone. I was super happy and not only were people buying it, but by selling half of my stock, I had pretty much broken even on all of my costs. And over the next few weeks, more stocks started to sell and I started making actually a decent amount of profit. It wasn't anything crazy, but remember I was still in high school and I was making a couple of grand, which I was pretty happy with. I thought this was finally it. All of my dreams were about to come true. I thought this was just the start and the next drop will be even bigger. I mean, who wouldn't, right? You would think word of mouth and an increase in followers would start to snowball and you would eventually start to see more traction, right? Well, the second drop was actually where it all started to go wrong. So following the success of my first release, I started going even harder for the second drop. I doubled down on things like Instagram content and started even making videos and so much more stuff. I even doubled down on the amount of stock I ordered, which in hindsight was a terrible decision. And things started to go drastically wrong. The first mistake I ran into was not even my mistake, but my supplier. They screwed me over and the quality of my clothes were terrible for the second drop. I had ordered samples prior to this, but the problem with the samples was the quality was completely different and so was the sizing. When I got my product, they completely bait and switched me and I just got an inferior product. About half of the products were okay and good quality and I could sell them, but about the other half were just terrible. I was obviously furious and I wondered if I should even sell them. The problem was since I had ordered so many more pieces, I was down thousands in costs. I had to sell these products or I was literally going to be screwed. So I had to tell everyone about the problems with them and that obviously wasn't a good look. But this honestly wasn't even the worst problem. It came drop day for the second collection and everything was ready to go. I would literally done so much marketing for this drop and I was even running things like Facebook ads. So I thought I would at least do some decent numbers. But as soon as the site went live, I got about two sales. Two, and that was literally so much different from the first time I had dropped. It was honestly such a hard pill to swallow that I had done all this work and all I could show for it was two sales. I thought it would come around a bit the next few weeks and it did a little bit, but I had probably only sold about 10 to 15% of the total stock. It was genuinely the hardest failure I've ever had in my life as I had put so much into this brand and I had ignored so many things in my life just to work on it and it was really taking a toll on my mental health. I went into a really bad place and I thought all my dreams were crushed. And I know some people have an idea that you should never quit and you should always keep going. But sometimes I think you need to take a step back and realize you're not probably in the best headspace to keep going. So I stopped working on it for a while. But obviously I had had some success with my first drop. So where did it all go wrong? And this is the most important part of it all. I think those of you who want to start a brand, really listen up. Because there were so many things that went wrong. But 
I think it boiled down to just a few things. Obviously with my second job, I had some problems with an inferior product from my supplier. But ultimately, that wasn't even what led me to fail. What actually led me to fail can be described in two simple things. Number one was getting my product manufactured in China. Now I think getting products manufactured in China and using Alibaba is great. I've used them so much. But if you're just starting out, I would recommend staying away from them. The translation between you and a Chinese supplier is too difficult to understand when you're first starting out. It's actually kind of a skill to learn broken English like them. But what's more important is when you use these suppliers, they usually require something like an MOQ, which stands for minimum order quantity. This means for each clothing item, you may have to produce about 50 items just to get started with them. And by doing this, you generally get lower prices, which is good. But I think the problem with this is you actually end up ordering so many more pieces than you actually need. And a lot of the time these suppliers aren't the most trustworthy as you can see in my case. I would really advise you to start out with just a local supplier in the start. Yes you're going to pay a higher price but the benefits are you actually get to work with these local suppliers and you can go and see them in person if they live close to you. You get way more control of your brand and you may not get as many customization options as you would with Alibaba but at least you know they're going to be trustworthy and you get more control of your production. But I think the biggest reason that I failed came down to one thing, the hype. Now when I say hype, I don't mean a lack of marketing, because I was pushing out plenty of content and it all looked pretty good, but I realise now that the lack of hype was the thing that went wrong with the second drop, and that is ultimately what led to its demise. And that is actually the hardest part of a clothing brand, and I believe it's why so many of them fail. But how do you keep the hype going or even get it started to begin with? Well if I look back to the first drop of my brand, there were many factors at play. It was new, it was fresh, and it had people talking. I knew quite a few people at school and when it was first announced everyone was talking about it. That novelty of something being new can really propel a brand's success, especially in the beginning. But to keep that going is so much harder. I also think things like having a personal brand is super important at the start too. What I mean by a personal brand is how you even market yourself. When I did my first job I was in high school and I was hanging out with people every day. But when I did my second job I had actually left school and I wasn't really hanging out or talking to as many people as I used to. That means me and the brand were in front of less people every day and generally less people were talking about it. But how do you actually keep this hype going once the novelty wears off? Well that's where like I say having a strong personal brand is super important. Network with people you know, try to grow your personal Instagram and TikTok and even try collabing with other brands or influencers to grow your exposure even more. Also I would recommend trying to target a really niche down small group. Try to get your name in front of everyone in this group. This ultimately gets people talking and that group will actually start to grow the brand more for you just through things of word of mouth and people coming into the community. Now that does sound a bit confusing but an example of this is trying to get in front of people in your school like I did. That creates people talking around the school and will get people talking more outside of it too because people know people and obviously just word of mouth gets around. And you can also use social media as well to target these types of groups. But overall with so much saturation in the fashion space I would really try and stand out. I would focus less on your designs and more on brand building and trying to run it like a business. And remember building that hype is just essential. But do know that this is one of the hardest industries to be in. And if you don't treat it as a serious business, you will not succeed. Now I could keep this video going on for ages, but I will leave it there. But if you'd like me to make another video on how to grow your brand, please let me know and I'll be sure to make one. But thank you so much for watching to the end. If it did help you or you enjoyed it, please leave a like. And also I make videos similar to this on e-commerce and similar things. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please consider subscribing. But thanks once again, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.